friends, welcome back. In today's video, I want to talk about the composite sun and the composite moon in aspect. How do they gel with each other depending on the aspect we, the aspect we look at? And um, what do we actually have here? What are we dealing with when we deal with these two? Now, before we look at the aspects, let's just look at each planet, planet luminary, and see what they represent in astrology. So we have the sun, the conscious principle, where we shine our light. And when we talk about the composite chart and the relationship, where is the relationship lit up? Like quite literally, what is the focus of the relationship? Where is the relationship going or where does the relationship want to go? And then when we deal with the moon, we deal with the unconscious, we deal unconscious, we deal with the yin, we deal with the emotional body, the emotional um, ability to digest life. And we also deal with all the conditioned parts that in case of this relationship that we bring in as the two. Now, when we look at the composite chart and we look at the moon in the ninth house, and then we look at each person's moon, which we have to do when we look at the composite chart, you cannot just look at the composite chart and then make this the end all be all. It is not. It is a chart that was, that doesn't exist. Right? It doesn't exist in reality. It is not based on um, the happenings in the sky. It is based on the midpoints of two actual natal charts. And so if we have this moon in the ninth house and then we see uh, one of these two has a moon in Capricorn and the other one has the moon in Aries. Now, we will look at that ninth house, ninth house and we will see that this relationship will emotionally thrive and be stable if these two get to explore, right? In their own way, get to explore on the mind level, but also get to explore the world. Now, when we deal with a Capricorn moon and, an, and uh, an Aries moon, now that Aries moon might want to push, push, push forward. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And then Capricorn, Capricorn Moon says, well, no, let's plan this. Let's like, see if this makes sense. Let's see if we really want to go. Maybe I don't want to go right now. We have issues with timing when we have an Aries Moon and a Capricorn Moon. Big issues with timing. And so we have to use our sun to become aware of what's going on with the Moon right, in the relationship and how we can make that work. Now, let's uh, get into the aspects. So if we look at the sun in trine and sextile and also in um, conjunction in the composite chart, we are looking at um, a chart of two people that will have a single mind, really. They come together, the conscious and the unconscious coming together and moving forward together. And this is usually a, a union that has a purpose that is lacking in other relationships. It's just a single purpose. We know, we know we, we belong together and we are going to make this work. This is one of the most foundational and basic aspects to have it by basic, I don't mean basic in any way. This aspect is not basic. This is a, this is a building block. If you have that building block, I mean, you've laid your foundation pretty much. Right? You have to have some very difficult aspects to, to make this aspect um, shaky. It is, uh, if you have that in a, in a conjunction and also in a trine and a sextile, you, you're good. You're good to go. You're good to go. And you probably, I mean, marriage is generally a thing here. I have not seen that in uh, a couple that wasn't married or not uh, yet to, you know, be married. It uh, generally is uh, an aspect of marriage because we, uh, we bring together 
a masculine and feminine principle based on uh, conscious and unconscious, right? I, I know I always talk about masculine and feminine principle when I talk about Mars and Venus, uh, but there it is more like a, a, it's based on my wants, my core values, my, my, my passion in life. And here we are talking about a stability that doesn't really have to do with, with passion. It doesn't really have to do with um, values per se. It, it has to do with, I shine my light and uh, that light creates space for all the, all the stuff that I will have to work through in the relationship. All the moon stuff that will come up, the unconscious, the issues, the conditioning that will make us go, you know, like that, th these issues that will certainly show up in this relationship as well, right? Because we're dealing with two human beings. So, but we have such a strong bond and we have a goal and uh, the goal is to stay together. That is the goal in this relationship and to go together up the mountain that little can really disturb us here. Not saying that it isn't possible to be disturbed. It, it is certainly possible, especially keeping in mind that we still deal with two individuals that, you know, that have a natal chart with energetics that, you know, may be at odds with each other. So if we, for example, have a moon in one chart that is uh, in... Scorpio and then in the other in the other chart we have a moon that is in um, Libra now these two are just they don't they're like w what are you doing like I don't even understand what you're doing so that's that's their moon and then when they come together in in this aspect in the in a in the, in, in the composite chart of the sun and the moon coming together in a conjunction. Now they, their moon, the way they personally deal with their moon will affect how this conjunction will work as well. So this conjunction doesn't work the same for every single chart. It will work differently depending on the two individuals, right? We will still be able to say, oh, we want to stay together, but we might have to put more work in here, right? Depending on our own dealings with our sun, you know, maybe our moon and our sun have very difficult aspects. So we will bring that into the relationship. We will still, in, in the composite chart, the relationship will still have that single-minded focus of us staying together. And it is indicating that we are complementary but we still have to deal with our stuff, right? We always have to keep that in mind when we when we look at composite charts. Like people, they sometimes make up stuff with a composite chart that it's fascinating. I don't know where that comes from because it's it's not a real chart as in it isn't based on a time or a date or um, even a, a location. It is, it is midpoints. And these midpoint points are based on two charts that we need to look at. We can't ignore them. But generally speaking, right? And this, these videos uh, that I'm doing for you, uh, these composite videos are obviously general videos. Generally speaking, this is a beautiful indicator of a union that came together with a goal, with, not with two goals, but with one goal. Right? We have that same goal. We, we want to make this work. We want to make this work. And generally, like I told you, it is working. There's things there, you know, certainly people have to work through their stuff, but it is really a beautiful indicator for a long-term relationship when we have that, especially in the conjunction, but also the trine and the sextile. Now, if we have this in a square and an opposition, that is a very different story. That is actually 
quite difficult and we also uh, however find this in married couples a lot but the the back and forth there is not very harmonious that back and forth is constant and it's sometimes i you know i feel like they are thriving on that that's the, that's their thrive that's why they it keeps them together it this back and forth in, in a way but it is over time it is really jarring and you have to really become conscious as you, you again have to look at how these two people are predepositioned in, in, in terms of their energetics in their chart. What's the sun saying here? What's the moon saying there? This is not going to be an easy relationship. This is not a relationship that is harmonious uh, at all. You know, there might be times where they can um, find common ground, but generally it is not a harmonious relationship. But this is a relationship where we learn a lot. We learn a lot. And that also, in a very unconscious way, keeps us together. That constant, like, growing. Because there is a lot of growth. But that comes with tension. So, especially when we, when we deal with the opposition here, we are, we are dealing with different elements. And... What happens when we bring two elements together, we can, you know, we can make, we can, we can learn something here that we wouldn't learn otherwise, right? We, we learn something that can help us be better, right? Be a better version of ourselves. But for that, you have to put your ego aside, which is generally the issue in, in in the opposition here in the opposition between the moon and the and the sun and also because we are dealing with the moon anytime we're dealing with the moon in any aspect we are dealing with unconscious layer we are dealing with things we are not aware of the sun in this case is helping us shining a light right and especially in the opposition the sun is shining the light on to the moon and we can become more conscious it is I don't, I don't want to say it's an easier aspect than the square, but um, on a consciousness level, it the understanding we can gain here is tremendous because we have that flashlight, right? That is just shining on us constantly. Whereas in the square, there is a certain fascination here, but it's just so strange. You know, the other is so strange. We are fascinated and we are just like drawn to that. You know, that fascination is just drawing us to each other or towards each other. But at the same time, it's repelling us. So it's like a constant like this. Um, and again, that, is, that can be really jarring and can chip away on you over time. Um, I, I, I personally find that aspect, especially the square aspect, um, I wouldn't want that. <laughs> I would not want that aspect. I wouldn't want to deal with that aspect. I mean, there must, if I uh, would see this aspect, find this aspect, I would definitely look for, for help. <laughs> for help. If I, if I try to stay in this relationship, if I try to make this work. Because as you know, and I heard me say before, you can, everything is workable. You can make everything work. It just depends on your, um, motivation and what you can handle and what you're willing to put up with because with this you will have to put up with a lot and a lot because of the unconscious part here you know and you are at mercy of the other dealing with their stuff on both ends so difficult but you know we are dealing with um with the foundation the true foundation uh, of life here so having this in your chart in any aspect is a sign of your soul draw that drew that in because you're clearly here to to grow to grow up and with the opposition and the square that uh, those growing pains are real they're real 
but also I need to say this is a rewarding coming together. You will feel more rewarding with the conjunction and the trine and the sextile, but also the opposition, or I think I would say, especially the opposition is, is re really rewarding if you do your inner work. If you do your inner work, that is that can be really a really, really beautiful relationship. It will constantly be up and down, right? You will constantly go through it and you will up level and up level and up level and grow and grow like you've never grown before in any other relationship. So there you go, sun, moon. If you have any question, questions, I should say, uh, leave me a comment below and I will talk to you in the next video.